as part of our series that we're doing on where can we go to find freedom, uh, I, I overheard a, a brilliant conversation recently, and it was Patrick and Ryan on Disenthrall, and it was really good. So I said, hey, you know what? This would fit perfectly into our series. So uh, the following is going to be number three. Uh, this is just their interview. And I, there's a little time-lapse issue that I have. It's my technological problem. So if you just look it up by the title uh, that is number one in the description, you can go to the Disenthrall channel and watch it where the timing is actually synced up beautifully. Ballstar says, Patrick, I thought you were a city boy. You want to go camping now? Dude, man. <laughs> Patrick, Patrick is changing very quickly with the tyranny that we've seen over the past year. Like, I am legit planning to find a way to get out of the city. Like, I'm done. I'm done being surrounded by tyrants that it's just like everybody around me is a tyrant. And so I'm like, I made a list here. This will be fun to talk about, actually, because I don't think I've talked okay. to you about this, Ryan. And you're going to laugh your ass off <clears throat> at me. So um, okay. <laughs> I, uh, I made a list of options for, for where my life could go if the government's tyranny continued. Mm -hmm. In order of extremeness. <laughs> okay. okay. So option one, stay where I am in the middle of a big city. Um, just, just go like super prepper in my house here in the middle of Dallas. Uh, you know, get food, get water, get um, guns and ammo, and just plan that if stuff goes sideways, you know, I'll, I'll make this a fortress, a self-sufficient fortress, until things calm down. Obviously, that's the most dangerous or least secure option, because what probably will happen is it won't be like a crazy shit hits the fan scenario. It'll be a slow 20-year slide into tyranny. <laughs> and... Mm -hmm. um, the city is the worst place to be for that. Like, that's where the tyranny comes first. And um, I was talking to my brother about this, too, and I thought this was a really interesting way to look at it. Tell me if you agree or can think of a better way. But I told him that I was orienting my predictions on where we're going to be going by looking at a city like New York or, like, L.A., San Francisco. They are huh? always ahead they, they they tell you where we're headed it's only a question of how long or how quickly we get to where that they already are you know in terms of gun control or um taxes uh socialism blah 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 right so that's yeah, they're, the, they're the, the first adopters of tyranny got it yes exactly the early, the early adopters of tyranny <laughs> so that sets the compass like that tells me which direction we're going okay now that we have the direction determined now it's a question of how quickly we're going to get there. Is it going to be one year? Probably not. Is it going to be 100 years? Probably not. It's probably going to be faster than 100 years. Um, so how quickly? What's the pace? Uh, and then I, what I was thinking was, is I looked at, you know, everybody's talking about all the Californians uh, moving to Texas, and they're yes. talking about the, the blue wave and uh, how they're going to, like, turn Texas into uh, a socialistic hellhole uh, as if it already didn't have a lot of that. And um, mm -hmm. and then I looked at the the last election results from last year, and I looked at the percentages, and then I looked at the election results from the election before that, and I realized that even with all the immigration that we've had from California, the 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 percentages only moved by two percent. Now, on average, every single seat, you know, in the House and in Congress and all that stuff, they all moved two percent towards blue. So there is movement towards blue. But it's two percent. Not a single seat, not a single rep, you know, uh, elected official flipped from red to blue. Um, and okay. they only move two percent. And there's an average of about a twelve to fifteen percent margin. Like this is a really red state. There's a margin of error. There's like a margin of red in there. And so then I, so I, I assume, okay, if it continues at two percent every two years, every time there's an election, then we have 12 to 15 percent of margin to eat up so that's 15 16 divided by two you know that's um what did i do no i did that wrong so that's uh so every two years that eats up a margin so we have 30 years if it goes faster than that let's say more and more people move from california and it moves faster than two percent then we have less than 30 years until some of those policies begin 
to be implemented. That's when it starts like accelerating quickly in Texas, right? So my yeah. m my estimate is like we have 30 years until it starts getting bad fast. So that's what I'm kind of like planning my life plan around. Do you have any? Do you, can you think of a better way to kind of predict that future? Uh, so you looked at election results from the past election. Is that what you said? The past Texas legislative elections. Is that what you're yes. talking about? Last year's. Yep. Uh, I, I would I would like to see how that changes in the next election because. A lot of those people did not come into town until this year or last year. So the end of last year that, at that. So I'd like to see if that uh, progressively increases the rate of change yep. or if it's still a, a steady rate of change. So, yeah. And, and my brother said the same thing. He bets that next year it's, or the next election in two years is going to be 4% instead of 2%. And then it might even accelerate after that, which means that we yeah. have, 10 years that means 10 years until right. st shit starts going sideways fast less than 10 years if it if it keeps yeah. up you know four percent or six percent or whatever change um so that is we what might, made go ahead so we might want to look back in history and see if we can find an example of this and see how how long it took is there is there an example I don't know. I'm just saying if we wanted to follow our own advice and see if there was something in the past that could give us an indication of, what, of how long this took. So 10 to 30 years until yeah. shit starts going sideways fast. So I need to come up with a life plan that I can implement that will protect me appropriately from that. Either, either and, way, I think it's inevitable. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's de I mean, it's like, it's definitely less than a hundred years, like without question, there is no question in my mm -hmm. mind. And there is also, there is no question in my mind and I'm happy to be proven wrong. If anybody in the comments or you Ryan wants to, I don't see it reversing. I don't see things getting better. I see no mechanism in culture or in government or, or politics or anything that is going to turn this, this, this train around to keep it from going over the cliff. Like, I mean, the spokespeople for the for the uh, the people that have seen what has happened in California and moved to Texas, they will say they will contradict themselves in the same breath. They'll say that what happened in California is an atrocity, and then they'll spout some fucking socialist shit right after that in the same breath. So I don't think that they even know how to learn from the past or learn any lesson. Uh, it just doesn't seem like that happens. Yeah, I, I don't see a mechanism. I don't see a lever that anybody can pull that will turn this around. I don't think that's happening. So again, I think the direction is set. It's only a question of speed. And I think yes. my best guess right now is 10 to 30 years. Um, okay, so I put together a yeah. list of options. And uh, okay. I put a lot of thought into this, everybody. Like This isn't like something, this isn't a list I threw together in 10 minutes. This is something I've spent weeks thinking through each of these options. Um, so in order of extremeness, we already talked about staying put, prepping here in the city. That's the, the least safe option 10 to 30 years out um, because tyranny comes to the cities first and there's a lot of tyrants here and there's a lot of law enforcement here and the, and the government has a lot of resources to uh, enact the tyranny in cities. Um, so that's the worst option, but it's also the least extreme and it's also the least... Uh, the least changes to life and lifestyle for now, you know, it would just, mm -hmm. I would, I would be able to live life mostly normally plus, you know, my fuel storage and food storage and gun storage, whatever. Then next up the list, number two would be uh, land in the middle of the country. So like, you know, a, a couple hours North of here, you're in Oklahoma, you're in the middle of nowhere. There's hardly any law enforcement. Um, there's, you're, you're not even, you can find places that is, aren't even incorporated into a government. It's just like land in the middle of nowhere. You, you can go out there and do whatever the hell you want. You like, I, I visited a place like this recently and it was an amazingly like perspective changing feeling standing in the middle of this acreage. Couldn't even see another neighbor. It was just like, if I, I was just thinking, I was thinking about the opportunities. I was like, you know, if I want to have a house with um, 
uh, a sound booth for audiobook recording, a studio so I can do this, if I want to have an office with all of my computer equipment so I can do my IT stuff. Like, I have to buy a massive, freaking expensive house to have rooms in the house for all the stuff that I want to do. If I'm in the middle of nowhere with 2,500 acres or whatever, and I want to build a hut for my sound booth, I just do that. I don't ask permission. I don't have to beg the HOA. I don't have to get approval. I don't have to get inspections. Um, whatever. I just do it. You just do what you want when you're out there. You have freedom. It actually exists out there um, to a very large extent compared to the city. And that was a powerful, mm -hmm. perspective-changing moment that I had. And Liberty After Dark says, Starlink, you can have your internet cake and eat it too. I ordered Starlink. I will ha That's one of my preps. Like People think about food and ammo and, and water uh, as preps. Internet's also a prep for me. And I, I grabbed Starlink for that because you, you know, you'll have, what, 30 meg up and down? Internet, wherever you are. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, next up the list from sort of like the countryside, let's say. So that would be like East Texas or South Oklahoma um, would be Mexico. So that we're talking like Acapulco, Bonfil, you know, places in Mexico. The advantage of those places is that um, there's already a network of voluntarists there that have been living there a while and they know the land and they know how to get stuff done and they can coach you and help you and support you if you went there. That's cool. I mean, that's something that the middle of nowhere, the country doesn't have, right? Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's already groups of volunteers in the middle of nowhere, like in the Ozarks and stuff like that, that, that would be options as well. But anyway, so that would be another country. And that comes with its whole set of upsides and downsides. Like you're not familiar at all with the legal system. You're usually at a legal disadvantage in any kind of dispute because you're a, a foreigner instead of a, a, a normal, a full citizen or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a much bigger lifestyle change. And it's not even necessarily a lasting, sure way to get more freedom. Because in a lot of ways, Acapulco is more free than America. In a lot of ways, the cartel there is just like the United States government or the local city government. Like they do violent things to people that do things they don't like. I mean, they are just a, they are a more honest, more upfront uh, government. <laughs> like yeah. they tell you what not to do. And if you do it, they kill you. And there's no- They're not pretending. Unlike the government where, you know, they, they tell you what not to do and they say, well, if you don't do it, then you'll have, ju you'll have a justice system that will protect you and you'll have a jail. No, I mean, they kill you too. They just want you to believe that they won't. Um, so Mexico, that was the next one. Next up from that, and we interviewed Alex Ugorgi on Anarchast a while back, and we also interviewed Ben Armani on Anarchast a while back. Saipan is the next one up the list. So we're in, you know, we're moving up the extreme list, right? Saipan is a little country near Guam, which is southeast of Japan and northwest of Australia. And it's an island country with, that is a territory of the United States. And it, uh, it is a population of 60,000 people. The government has almost no resources. They don't enforce anything. Um, most of the government employees are just sort of lazy welfare whores that just want to cash their paychecks and, and have a chill life. And this is what Vin tells me. Um, the cost of living is super low there. So like you can have like a beachfront mansion for what I pay for a house in the city here. Um, the IRS doesn't touch the people that live there and work there. Like you have no interaction with the IRS, even though you're in a territory of the U S you can go there without a passport because it's a territory, but there is no IRS. The only taxes you pay are like the local taxes or whatever. So no cap gains. So like you could go there with all your cryptocurrency, uh, you know, do your cryptocurrency investing on the books. You wouldn't even be worried about it. Make a ton of money. You wouldn't even have to tell the IRS or pay capital gains taxes. Like the, that just, those things just don't exist in Saipan. So it's like you get the advantage of, of um, your American citizenship and the, the protections that that uh, is afforded, but you don't get the taxes, which is a huge difference. Downsides are, um, the, the culture seems to be, uh, um, they tell me the culture is very sort of lazy and non, non-productive and I don't want my kids to grow up in an area where they're surrounded by a bunch of, of people that aren't, you know, striving to be successful and productive in life. And, um, and just like round trip tickets there is like $1,600. So like coming to and from would be a big deal. That would be a big expense 
Like, I don't even want to pay $1,600 to fly there to check it out because that's so expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's the next one. Now we're getting, that was about as crazy as I can get, but I, I only have one better than Saipan, and that is the sailboat. And I've talked about this on the channel before. So, like, buying a yacht, like a 40-foot yacht, and just living on the ocean. Like, I love sailing, so that would probably be fun for a little while, and that's the downside. It would probably be great for a year, maybe two years, but then it would just probably be miserable, and I would be sick of it. Um, but, I mean, that's the freest place on Earth is floating around in the ocean, right? Yeah. So those are the options I uh, evaluated. You and, didn't um, even think about the the one spot in the middle of the Saharan Desert, that one spot <laughs> in Antarctica? That didn't even come to your mind. <laughs> those inhabitable places that are completely free. <laughs> yeah, so the other thing... Uh, the uh, the option that wasn't on my list, but because I evaluated it and thought it sucked, was uh, van life. So like like I would buy like a school bus and make my family live in it, and then we would just drive around. So like if Dallas got too tyrannical, we would drive to the Ozarks or something. You know, like you just move around the country. Right. Um, but man, that that is a cramped lifestyle that comes with a whole long list of like ways in which you're not really as free just by virtue of the lack of space. But, I mean, the, yeah, anyway. So, yeah. Uh, those are my thoughts. I was actually looking at Cypher. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's, you know, the, the whole series of videos is just meant to spark your thinking, and, and, you know, hopefully you'll come up with some ideas, share them with us, and, uh, yeah, maybe we'll find a way to, to escape the, the victimization that we're facing uh, at the hands of the tyrannical governments. And it's not as bad as it's going to get, but it's probably worth thinking about now. Thanks for joining us again today, and please do subscribe.